One of the most discussed topics for LoRa is antennas, and everybody wants to have a good one, especially for gateways. Today we will build a collinear antenna which promises a gain of 5 dBi, which is a factor of 3 for the sending power as well as for the receiving sensitivity. And these collinear antennas are still omnidirectional, so your gateway can receive signals from all directions. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. If you want a better antenna, usually you try to get a longer one. This is why I ordered this one immediately after starting with LoRa. Unfortunately, it did not perform better than the short ones during my world record attempt. So I never used it again. Then I got the link to an external antenna for a gateway published in the TTN forum. Because I still was on the quest for a better antenna, I also built one of these. But I was not able to tune it correctly to the LoRa band. I already mentioned the term collinear antenna. You get them in different shapes. Some are made of short pieces of coax cables and others are made of wires of a particular length with three loops. They are not complicated to build and very cheap. Compared with a ground plane antenna, where we only have to hit one measurement, there we have more choices. The length of the three different parts as well as the diameter of the loops. The antenna from TTN uses only 15 mm loops and therefore fits a widely available 20 mm PVC pipe. This is very convenient because copper wires are not very stable and this antenna is quite long. Then Richard from the UK sent me a new design for a collinear antenna which was made by Fabien, a French professor who has all the knowledge and the tools to create all sorts of antennas. So today I try to build one according to his plan. It is shorter than the first one, but its loops have a bigger diameter and the wire diameter should be 1.4 mm. So I cannot use any more the 20 mm PVC pipes. This is why I thought I could entirely omit the tube and build a freestanding antenna. I also wanted to use copper. The 1 mm copper wires used for my first antenna was not very stiff. When I asked my doctor for a solution to this particular problem, he proposed this blue pill, but I did not find out how to feed it to the wire. Fortunately, my friend Urs knew a better and cheaper method. He told me that if you stretch a copper wire, it becomes stiffer. So let's test this technique. I have here a standard 2 mm square copper wire used for 240 volt installations. Its diameter is 1.7 mm, which seems to be perfect for our stretching experiment. Because if we stretch a wire, it also gets thinner. So we have to pull the ends till its diameter is 1.4 mm as requested by the plan. But how to stretch such a wire? We tried hard with our muscle force, but without success. So we have to use more massive tools. The heaviest tool in my box is the one here. Still made in the USA, it should be strong enough. At least if we use all its available power. And really, we get the intended effect. The wire is longer now and therefore it should also be thinner. As a side effect it became straight which looks much nicer. And yes, it is thinner. You see it because we can undress it without any problems. And is it stiffer than before? Yes, horse was right. Maybe I should propose this procedure to my doctor as a cheaper alternative. Now we can go on and bend the loops. I printed small plastic parts for that purpose. We only have to turn the wire around it and bend them with pliers. At the bottom we solder the wire to an SMA connector. Now we can measure the SWR. If we leave the antenna as built, we do not get a good response on 867 MHz. Only if we add a ground plane consisting of these four wires 
it gets a reasonable SWR. I made these sticks using naked crimp terminals and an SMA connector with four holes. You find the links in the description. The resonance frequency is, after twisting the loops, at 867 MHz and the SWR at 1.2, which is nearly perfect. If we zoom out, we see that the overall curve is similar to the simulated one. So we can assume that also the calculated gain will be in the planned range. For the moment I have no time to test it thoroughly. And anyway, it's rainy outside. One thing about tuning. I had to play with the diameter of the three loops to get the resonance frequency to 867. Without such a VNA it is hardly possible to build such an antenna. If I change the loop diameter, the resonance frequency drops about 30 MHz and the antenna is no more good. For the outside, I still want to have it protected. This is why I bought a wider PVC tube. But because I had to extend the loops during the tuning, my tube is too small now. Maybe I can use it for a different project. One thing at the end. The Harley-Davidson is optional. You can use thinner wire and stretch it with muscle power. It will be softer, but it still will work. I want to thank my supporters on Patreon for supporting the channel. Without you, it would be difficult for me to do what I do now. Bye!